Welcome, YouTube. On today's oddball adventure, we shall be picking this Yakima Ridgeback lock. In order to remove the lock, find the stamped number on the side of it so that we can order the replacement key, which, of course, we have lost or has not come with this used one. But just so we make expectations clear, I am not very good at picking locks. I've only done this once before and barely managed to do so. However, what I think you will find useful is, well, I speak for myself, but I'm a visual learner and not really knowing what's going on inside that lock drove me nuts. So what I'm going to do up front is I'm going to remove the lock so you can see how its internals function so that you have a better idea of what to do when you're actually trying to pick the lock. For starters, and no commentary on whether this is good locking, lock design or not, in order to remove the whole lock cylinder, we need to undo these three bolts here at the bottom of the handle. They are star-shaped. They are Torx bits, T15 size. The tool looks kind of like this, and we got three of these. All right, screws are out, and again, this is what it looks like, this Torx shape pattern. And with that, we can remove this assembly with the lock, and we can push it out, and now we have both the lock and the cylinder it is being kept in. You will notice, of course, that nowhere here is the code stamped on the cylinder, which is what we need. So unfortunately, we will still have to actually unlock this thing and pull the lock itself out of the cylinder, and that's where we will find the stamp. Now then, let's get this lock out of its cylinder so we can look at what we're dealing with. By the way, this can only be done when it is unlocked, and I will show you how to tell that in a bit. But we press down on this wafer here, and the whole lock comes out of its cylinder. The magic number will be right here. A four digit alphanumerical. Let's have a detailed look at what's going on here. When you put the key in, these four wafers go in. Now I do actually have the key. Let me just insert it so you can see what happens. See, when I inserted it, these four wafers went down and that's what allows it to unlock because you see these two notches here that is where the wafers normally rest uh, one of them is the lock position now i don't know which one is which at the moment but one is the locked position and one's the unlocked position once they're in that position and you take the key out the spring mechanism will pop those wafers back out and immobilize the cylinder or the lock inside the cylinder however there is also a fifth wafer here. This fifth wafer, and I believe they're called wafers, maybe tangs, this is what actually keeps this lock in place and prevents it from sliding out of the cylinder. And in order to press this one down, ordinarily you would use a control key. Now a control key doesn't mean that the control key is like a master key and can unlock any lock. All it really does is, once you have this in an unlocked position, the control key, all it does is it presses in this fifth and final wafer. When it does, it releases it out of its housing. The housing, this is the back end of it, you can see that there's a, a notch there in the back, and that's where the fifth wafer sits. That fifth wafer is what allows you to pull the lock out of the cylinder. Now, the reason this has to be in the unlocked position in order for you to pull this out is because of this tab right here. This tab inside the cylinder would have to slide through this notch here. So now let's put it back in. See, now it's locked in place and I will show you one more time how to get the lock out of the cylinder. You basically have to, you have to press this tab down. Now the key doesn't actually have to be in there, by the way. Sorry about that. there but we can only do this from the unlocked position so in practice if you have the lock already unlocked and you're missing the key you won't have to pick it at all you just have to take this apart take those bolts off 
You can tell it's unlocked because this half moon shape here, where you insert the key, is on the left side closest to the Y if you're looking at the knob top down. This means it's unlocked. That means I can pop this out, I can press this wafer down, and with a bit of wiggling, the cylinder will come out, and presto, I will have the magic number. However, if it is locked, and this is where the fun part begins, then you will have to pick it. So I'm going to lock it right now, and you can go about it in one of two ways. Now, personally, I picked this lock with this whole cylinder assembly out because it allowed me to see both sides simultaneously. So I could, I could work both from the front and the back because, again, I'm not good at this and I needed all the help I could get. However, if you have a good amount of dexterity and maybe even a good set of tools, there's no reason why you couldn't pick this lock with the lock attached to the bike rack already. You just probably have to find a way to immobilize this knob so that it doesn't rotate on you because you'll be pull putting a rotating motion as you're trying to pick it. So now, without any further ado, let me attempt to pick this lock. Let's talk tools of the trade. These are household items, so you don't necessarily need to go out and buy anything. This is just a bobby pin. All we have to do is take a pair of wire cutters, cut off the little wax bead at the end, and we will bend it like this to provide ourselves our levers. This will be our lock pick. But I'm basically trying to put, push, the, push the wafers down using this tool. But simultaneously, I'm going to have to apply pressure on this, on this lock in an attempt to keep the wafers in place as I try to push each one of them down. In order to do that, you can use one of two tools. A crowd favorite seems to be the um, clip of a pen, you know, especially the ones that have like an angle. You remove that and you insert that in, and now you have leverage. It, in fact, it kind of looks similar to this. If you don't have that, I use a screwdriver and I exerted the same kind of pressure. Now. Once again, this lock is now in the locked position because the half moon is facing the right in the top down direction closest to the A. And in order to unlock it, we need to exert clockwise pressure. So this is now locked, this is now unlocked. And likewise, if you're choosing to deal with this with the whole cylinder out, this is the locked position. You can tell because of these three, uh, let's call them extrusions it's facing the rightmost extrusion if we're looking at, at it from the top down, the half moon facing the rightmost extrusion. All right, picking the lock. Here is my own personal technique. I'm sure there's tons of better ones, but this one worked for me. There are many others like it, but this one is mine. All right, lock is currently locked. I take a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna need to exert clockwise pressure on this lock inside the cylinder. Because I'm turning it upside down, I'm actually going to be using my fingers to re rotate the cylinder and not the lock. So that becomes now clockwise. So flathead screwdriver between my knees. I'm gonna exert clockwise pressure on the cylinder. I'm gonna use my trusty gasket removal tool. These, the, you can buy a set of these at Harbor Freight for like five, maybe ten bucks, but who knows, with the inflation, maybe two hundred bucks. <laughs> this is useful because I can see all the wafers here, and I can actually push a whole lot of them up at the same time and make my life a little bit easier. Then I still have a little bit of trouble with the one all the way in the back. If I play around a bit and do this in optimal lighting conditions so you can see what you are doing and you know try a bunch of different things maybe it helps to this way and you know this quickly becomes just an exercise in patience and finesse oh did i get it yes i did look at that and now it is unlocked not much to it just press this fifth wafer down like i showed you before pops out and we have our magic combination, the secret password, the word of the day. Write it down. Ooh, not sure that was supposed to happen. Don't know why this decided to fall out. <laughs> have I tortured this cylinder too much? This lock way too much? 
Anywho, ignoring that happy little accident, to reassemble, find the big notch on the front of the cylinder. That is where the fifth and final wafer will insert into. Gets inserted, back into this. Make sure that whatever position this is in, it should match whatever position you left the, um, the rest of the Yakima in. So if it was originally in an unlocked state, you're gonna need to bring it back to an unlocked state or just wait until you get your key in so you don't have to repeat this exercise. And you'll know because this pin right here needs to align with this or dowel needs to align with this slot right here. So actually, I think I may have had it locked, so there. Yeah, now we're talking. Now the lines. We put back our three T15 bolts. And that's that. Now you are a bona fide cat burglar. You can get back to locking up your Yakima, and things are looking pretty good. As for me, I'm probably gonna have to replace that lock cylinder. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.